Welcome back to my 2000 M5. Welcome to E39 Source. Um, today we're going to be working under the hood on a couple very small projects. Um, really, probably the last things I'll do to this car before it sits for the majority, actually, entirety of the winter. So it may look a little different up here. All the way up there. I've removed the um, firewall trim. Reason being, it was literally crumbling apart. There's two pieces. The one on the right is significantly larger than the one on the left, looking at it at this angle. And ever since I've owned the car, it's kind of had a hole in it, and it's all cracked and really dry, and anytime I clean the engine up and wipe it, it just falls apart. So I finally uh, found the replacement part that I need, um, and those are the two pieces we'll be replacing today. And I removed the old one. And um, after getting the new one in the mail today, it's incredible to me. In fact, I thought it was the wrong part. It's unbelievable how much of mine had crumbled and disappeared. This is the size of the piece. The one that I took out was about a fourth this size. And half of that fourth is under the car in pieces about the size of, I don't know, frosted flakes. So this is what we're gonna be putting in today. It shouldn't be too difficult goes like this then there's one more piece on the left um, you can see that wiring harness right there is going to fit down through there so um, I guess we'll do a DIY on this it's really not difficult but I figured uh, I couldn't really find it elsewhere so I, I will make it um, hardest part of this is probably just the area we're working in it's kind of cramped and you've got to lean way over the car to get up there um, to make things a little bit easier we are going to remove the air boxes and the uh, hose is going into the firewall. So let's start off on the driver's side, pick up this trim. I've probably done this DIY 10 times on how to remove these boxes, but there's always people that ask, so we're gonna do it again. So just lift up on that trim, put it out of the way, open up this little door and remove it. Take out your filter, put it aside. Now, on the driver's side, we have the hood sensor, so we need to be careful of that. Really, it's easiest if we just unplug it like so. Then we should have this metal clip, squeeze the sides, pull out, put it somewhere where you won't lose it. Um, last thing, we, there's three little tabs here. We'll just use our fingers. You can use a flat blade if you find that easier. I don't. Um, to lift that up, push it out of the way. Now we'll pick up on the corner of the box nearest the hood sensor lift it up and pull it out like that. Set that aside. Now would be a great time to check your brake fluid level or clean out any crap in there. This thing, these never connect to the firewall correctly. Um, I replaced this in I think May or June and it's already not staying how it should, whatever. Twist it, pull it out and place that to the side. Now it's the exact same process on the other side. Um, just without the hood sensor. So I'll trust that you guys can do that. Lift all that out of there. And then there is this center piece of trim. And we'll act like you still have yours in there, I suppose. I'll tell you how that's gonna come out. And we'll move this center piece of trim out of the way as well. So I'll tear that other side down, and then I'll tell you how we're gonna put this stuff in. So if we're going to be replacing all of the firewall trim and the associated hardware, these are the parts that you're gonna need. The right piece of trim, the left piece of trim, four twist and lock screws, as we'll call them. You're gonna need, I think it's three, I ordered six of these and four of the acceptors. So now we'll go through with part numbers. The smaller piece for the left firewall trim is 517126942182. Looks like that. The right side that was my primary issue is 517126942217. So there's the largest two things. Now you'll need five of these. I bought four, I guess I'll just reuse one of the old ones. 517182049049. These are twist and lock. So five of those. Now, it appears that this trim came with the one that's needed and the other ones are still in the car. So you probably won't need these. If you do, 517175719975. And these metal clips are what fit in the body of the car and what the twist and locks twist and lock into. The last three parts you need, I have six. The last three you need are 61131925120. Um, ECS does not have these. I had to get these from BMW parts of South Atlanta and they just got here today. So those are all of the parts we're gonna need. We've already torn this down so we can see what we're dealing with. Um, I'm assuming that your old pieces are still in here or they're damaged or whatever reason you have to replace them. 
it's really a straightforward install or uninstall. You'll see once you have uh, those hoses out of the way that go to your air boxes, there's one of those metal things that I bought and probably don't need. There should be another one right there. There's a third one here and a fourth one there. Um, in those are the twist and locks. Turn them 90 degrees, either counterclockwise or clockwise, pull them out, and uh, then you should just be able to, oh yeah, then you'll have those three parts up here. You just lift those off. They're like little, little hands that hold it on. Lift those off, the trim's already out of the way, so lift those off, unscrew the four twist and screws, and then you should just be able to kind of pull it out, uh, being careful of the uh, engine harness right here. So now the installation is just the opposite of the uninstallation, really. And I'll get going. All right, the hardest uh, little twist and clip to put in is right down here. You'll see that I had to kind of pull that harness, the wiring harness, out of the right side piece of trim to be able to get access to that. It's right down there in the center of frame right now. So now that that's, you put it in horizontal, turn it uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees until it's vertical and then that kind of clips it in. So now that that's in there, I can wedge this back in the slot. You'll see that there's kind of a little channel that it fits in on the, on the wiring harness here. So that'll slide in there. And I took two of the three clips and you just sandwich them down over top. One over there, one here in the center, and we'll put the final one here when I get that piece installed in a moment. So I've done everything now, but just reinstall the air boxes and the hoses and the uh, yeah, top piece of trim. You'll see we have the three tabs on top like that then we need five i was incorrect in ordering four five of these push and turn so i just use one of the old ones down here um, this all goes together fairly well it's tight though there's not a lot of, of margin for error you've got to press that wiring harness this way into that big piece of trim pretty hard for it to kind of pop in there and then everything else just fits with enough tolerances and this thing that last pop that last push and turn rivet here, you've really got to push in there and then turn vertical, and now it's very tight. So definitely an improvement. I was missing all that trim or missing a huge chunk of it here, and now it's nice and fresh. A little dirty right now, but that'll be a lot better. So putting these boxes back on, I am gonna talk about that in uh, more detail. Let me first get the hoses in there. We're gonna start on the passenger side. Don't worry if you can't get those things back in right. I mean, even when they're brand new, they're impossible. Just get it as snug and tight as you can on there. So this is the left side, lower air box. Obviously that side is going to be what connects up to the hose and the side with the vent. Now would be a good time to uh, pop open the flap, make sure that's not full of leaves. That's just drainage ventilation, which will go in there and then out in your fender liner. So it's a good time to clean all this stuff. Um, putting this on is what people have issues with, but we want to start with the back left corner closest to say your passenger side mirror. And it's got this lip on it right here that needs to go behind this lip right here. Also, these are the hinges for the, uh, the lid to this box and they fit up in these slats, one there and one there. It sandwiches inside. So we'll put it back like this. This will be a little hard to do with one hand because you've kind of got to press it harder than I can. Push it back in the corner Try my right hand. Get it sandwiched back there, back in the corner, and down like that. And then obviously it's gonna hook over that uh, peg on the strut tower. Give it a push back in the corner, as you can see, mine already fell down. Um, so then we'll just kind of line that up, snap it on top, replace the filter, replace the clip, and finally the lid. Here's your finished product. Um, really happy with that. It's just one of those stupid little things that didn't really matter that's been kind of bothering me since I've had the car and now it's how it is supposed to be. Um, I've also spent the last half hour or so changing these uh, oil return hoses here, uh, upper plenum back down here. Got these from ECS. There's already a DIY on the channel from Andrew, but it's real simple. There's just two hose clamps and do it with the engine cold so you don't uh, spill oil all over the place. So we got nice fresh hoses there. This feel really strong now. The old ones weren't actually too bad, but uh, they were just feeling a little bit weaker. They didn't spring back to round form real quick. I replaced all the hose clamps too. And I also have now an E46M3 oil filler cap, uh, which turns quite a bit further and quite a bit tighter and won't leak. 
like the M5 caps. And I replaced this uh, engine oil cap with a um, OEM M5 cap. And you know, every couple of days you'd start to see a little trickle again. So that is the uh, mid-fall maintenance on the S62. So thanks for watching. Any comments, concerns, leave them below. Again, your biggest frustration with this job up here is just going to be getting these things back right, and they won't, so don't worry about it. Oh, and uh, unlike me, do plug in your hood sensor. Don't forget that. All right. Click. Okay, talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.